All right, we want to welcome everyone to another edition of the Autograph Dynasty podcast. Uh, we have um, our buddy, uh, Tarverius Moore from the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and for the next season or so, uh, we're going to have a regular podcast with Tarverius. And we're going to be talking about a little bit of everything um, from 49ers football to um, other interests Tarverius may have outside of, uh, outside of football. Um, so we'd like to welcome uh, Tarverius to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so for uh, people who may not know you very well yet, um, can you tell us a little bit about you know where you grew up and how you got into football and things like that? Uh, I grew up in a small town in Mississippi, um, Equipment, Mississippi to be exact, uh, a very small town, only about two stoplights in the whole um, area. Um, so I guess you could say I'm a, a country boy. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, just growing up in a small town like that, um, Family is just definitely an important thing in my life. Uh, just always having the support of my family, my my uncles, and, and all of my cousins was what really got me into sports and and things like that. Uh, just uh, neighborhood activities and, and things like that to do, you know, just to keep me occupied uh, is definitely how I got into playing sports. Okay. And um, how did you get into football specifically? Did you play like Pop Warner, or, or did you start in high school, or kind of give us a little bit of an idea when you got into, into playing football? I definitely started around Pop Warner. Um, okay. I started playing around the age of seven. Okay. Uh, and just fell in love with it. Uh, I always was um, a pretty good athlete, and no matter what sport that I played, but uh, I definitely could say that I stood out more in football, and, and everybody could notice. So. Uh, once I started playing football, I, I just never stopped uh, year round. Just whenever I could play, I, I was always playing. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, and um, did you always play the same position uh, throughout, or have you changed a little bit? Uh, I've changed changed a lot actually. Okay. Um, I started off playing just um, running back, uh, and then as I got into middle school and on up, I was a quarterback receiver. Okay. okay. Um, and by the time I got to high school, that's when I, I transitioned to DB. Uh, I started playing corner. Okay. Uh, and then uh, my last two years of high school, um, I moved to safety. Okay. And then okay. I was a safety all throughout college. And uh, here I am again, back at corner. So right. <laughs> it's, it comes it's full circle. A, yeah, it's been a lot of changes. But, I mean, uh, I guess that just goes to show to my athletic ability, you know, uh, I can be put in a lot of places, right? And I can do a lot of things, right? Right. And how was it? How was it uh, playing college football as a, as a safety? Can you give us a little bit of detail as to how you, what your experiences were? Uh, more as safety, you get to see the whole the field. You get to see the field. You see how formations develop, plays can develop. Uh, you can get a good jump and a, a good break on a lot of things uh, thrown deep. Because I mean, you're reading the quarterback. Uh, you clued into your keys and assignments. Uh, as far as it is in, uh, as playing corner in the NFL, I mean, playing corner, it's, it's, it's a lot of a narrow vision to start off. Uh, and then you have to open up your vision, which is even harder. Right, right. Because, I mean, you start off just uh, basically staring down a guy, and then at the snap of the ball, he's running full speed at two. Right. You're running backwards, and you're having to open up your vision and see the whole formation, the whole route tree. Right, right. Uh, so it, it's definitely a bigger transition as far as uh, just the mental aspect of it. Oh, no, totally understand, totally understand. And um, what was it like uh, uh, going to the Combine and participating in that? Can you share a little bit about your experience? Oh, I actually didn't go to the Combine. Oh, you didn't? I okay. didn't. I, I, uh, I got drafted third round, but I didn't go to the Combine, which was was something uh, that a lot of scouts and, and things like that, you know, had never seen a lot of right. people do. Uh, so not going to the combine, it, it really didn't affect me. Uh, I knew what I could do. Uh, sure. I knew my talents, and I knew that uh, I could showcase them on pro day and, and open up a lot of scouts' eyes. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about what what it was like on draft day? You know, were you nervous? Did you have like a little party going on? Or can you tell us a little bit about what happened that time? Uh, that day? Definitely, nerves was running. Um, I did have uh, a few family members over, uh, just a, a small get together, not anything too extravagant. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, hearing my name called just was a sigh of relief. Uh, you know, just uh, a joyous moment that I was able to share with my family, my mom, and my all of my uncles. Uh, you know, something that I never forget and something that I definitely cherish, and it was a dream come true. Did you have any inkling that you'd be uh, playing for the Niners or that you'd be coming to the West Coast? I actually didn't. Okay. Uh, they only talked to me a couple. Uh, they talked to me throughout the back end of the draft process. Um, I actually didn't take a visit out here, but they definitely kept in contact with me throughout the back end of the draft process. So, uh, just going into draft night, uh, you know, sometimes 
it's not easy getting drafted to a team that you never visited right. throughout the process. Right. So, uh, but I always had them in, in, my, in, my, uh, in the back of my mind. So I'm just glad and blessed that it all worked out. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, what was it like uh, moving from uh, Mississippi to to the Bay Area? Uh, definitely challenging uh, a little bit. Um, just mostly the expenses, you yeah. know, <laughs> cost of living is a lot cheaper in Mississippi, but, uh, and just being away from my family. Oh, absolutely. That, that absolutely. definitely was probably the biggest challenge, being away from my family, uh, you know, growing up all my life in Mississippi, playing college ball in Mississippi, uh, always just having my family there with me, uh, and then, you know, coming out here, which is, uh, you know, five-hour flight right. at the at the least, and uh, not getting to see them as much uh, is, is definitely a challenge, but, uh I, w- I communicate with them well uh, throughout the week, so it all works out. Absolutely, and I'm sure you uh, probably could do without a lot of the traffic in the Bay Area, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, that seems to be one of everyone's biggest kind of uh, things when they when they move over oh, here. Oh, yeah. Um, so what was the, what was it like, you know, kind of getting started with the Niners and, you know, transitioning to cornerback? Was it kind of a difficult transition for you, or were you, were you kind of just excited at the prospect of, you know, seeing what you could do? Uh, I definitely say excited. Uh, I'm always up for a challenge, and uh, you know, the organization placed a big one in front of me to uh, you know try to switch positions because they feel that that's my uh, that'll be my greatest strength. Uh, you right. know, playing in this league. So uh, I just was excited for the challenge to uh, you know try to get better each and every day, improve them right. Uh, you know, so that that was my biggest mindset coming into it, just to just to prove them right. Okay. Okay. And so far on the Niners, who has been uh, uh, the toughest receiver to cover? Uh, toughest receiver. Uh, surprisingly, it's, uh, it's it's probably a tie between uh, Marquise and um, and Vic. Okay. Vic a pretty tough matchup. Uh, okay. He's, he's really quick, uh, shifty, and he runs really well. I mean, he's a speedster, so uh, you know when you got a guy like that who can run by you and then stop on the dime, uh, it's pretty tough to uh, cover him and Keese. Oh, okay, okay. No, makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, what's what's it like playing under uh, Coach Sala? You know his approach and things like that. You know what what do you what do you kind of uh, like about his you know what he does? No, I mean he, he's more of a laid back head uh, uh, coach. I mean, uh, but he know how he knows how to uh, get his players ready to play. Uh, he know how to light that fire on us each and every day. Uh, either either by competitions or you know personal competition that we do within position groups or or just things like that. Uh, but I mean, it's definitely his scheme. His scheme fit, uh, fits the players that we have here, and we all just buy into it and uh, we just go out there and have a good time. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, what was it like, uh, you know, getting into getting to play in the preseason games? You know, was it a, was it a big excitement just to get in front of the crowd and things like that? Uh, dirt definitely was uh, nerve wracking. I mean, uh, you grow up your whole life seeing these games on TV, and now I'm actually being able to play into one. So. It was definitely uh, a lot of nerves running, uh, a lot of excitement, and just uh, I just was anxious, just anxious to prove that I belong. And uh, so I just went out there every day and tried to showcase my talents. Before any of the games, any of the preseason games, did you do you have any sort of like pregame rituals, or you got to eat a certain meal, or anything like that? Uh, I definitely say uh, my ritual would just be. Uh, just to vibe out, just to listen to my music and, and okay. just vibe out in the locker room before the game. Just just try to calm my nerves down some and just, just get my mind focused on my assignment and what I have to do. Okay, okay. And I'm sure you, you, you've learned a lot, you know, with uh, with someone like Richard Sherman, um, you know, on the roster. What, what are some things that he's kind of shown you in terms of playing the position? Uh, just the keys, just the keys that the offense can give us, you know, uh, whether it's a cut split by the receiver, uh, how he runs his route a certain way that he might not for a different type of route. Um, and just um, basically field position at that. Uh, the way the receiver's lined up, he's lined up too far outside the hash, you know, and that eliminates certain routes that he can run. So he's just a mastermind. Uh, Richard, he definitely uh, knows the game. He knows our defense well. And uh, he just uh, – a guy that I can always go to if I have a question, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, who so far has been um, maybe the biggest uh, jokester on the team that you've encountered so far? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest jokester? Uh, Tart, actually. Oh, okay. okay. Tart. I mean, he's uh, he's kind of a quiet guy. Uh, you know, he's from down south just like me. Right. But, I mean, uh, the guy always uh, finds a way to make me laugh every day. Uh, especially if he sees someone, you know, maybe a little down or something like that. He's always trying to give words of encouragement and just crack a joke or something like that. Okay. 
Okay. Is there, um, you know, as as the you know as the season approaches, um, is there is there any opponent you're specifically looking forward to, to playing, or any you know location you're looking forward to going to? Uh, just every opponent. Okay. Uh, I mean, every game is, is going to be the biggest game on our on our on, schedule. Um, on our schedule that week. So, just every team, uh, you know, it's my it's my first season. So, just to get in the feel for every team in the league, you know, how a certain team run out their operations a certain way. Just to uh, go out there and and play against those guys, you know, those great guys who uh, who's blessed to be in this position as me as well. So, I just say every game. Right. Right. No makes makes. Perfect sense makes perfect sense, and uh, I know you guys have your game coming up against the uh, the Minnesota Vikings in a couple of days. Um, so you'll be traveling over over there in a little in a right. few days. Um, so uh, in terms of, of preparing for the week, what what sorts of things do you do during the week? You know, aside from practice, uh, to prepare yourself for a game. Uh, definitely film study. Uh, I mean, you ha- you have to get to know your opponent in order to uh, be able to beat them. So. Uh, just definitely uh, preparing myself by watching as much film as possible um, just to try to learn their tendencies and, and, and things like that, you know, what the position of the field, where they like to run certain plays. Uh, but uh, and just taking care of my body, uh, you know, rest and recovery, making sure I'm in shape for the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I know you guys have not too much downtime, but in your downtime, what are, you know, some things that you, you enjoy doing? Uh Really, just uh, relaxing. I, I like to watch a lot of TV in my spare time, so okay. Okay. I, I, I can say that. Uh, so whenever I can just find me a good show, and uh, you know, just just lay up and just relax. Okay. What what, uh, what shows right now have uh, caught your interest so far? Uh, Queen of the South. Queen okay. of the South. Is okay. a, I, I like a lot of drama and, and yeah. documentaries nice. and things like that. Okay. Okay. No, Queen of the South definitely has a lot of uh, has a lot of action in oh, that. Yeah. show. <laughs> a lot of action in that show. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, you know it's always exciting for for guys is um, you know when they do make it to the NFL, it's pretty cool to that they see themselves on like you know uh, Madden. You know, right. when they get in the games and things like that. Um, you know, so I think as as kind of the the, the season progresses, you know, you'll probably have more more opportunities and more experiences right. to see yourself, you know, uh, in other, in other avenues and other, other things as well. Um, excuse me. Um, so, uh, with regard to, um, uh, playing on the defense, you know, uh, what's it like to, to work together with, with the other guys on the, on the team and, you know, kind of mesh with different personalities and their different skill sets. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like, every other team I, I mean uh it's just a brotherhood so i mean just being around those guys every day you, you grow fond of them you, you create a bond uh that you know you wouldn't create any other way uh you have to trust that person so uh it's definitely it's definitely a brotherhood that uh you know we just all come together and uh we just all come to learn each other's personalities and, and just accept everybody how they are i mean nobody really judges anyone or anything like that we just uh we just all love the game of football, and, and we come together. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, just kind of switching gears a little here, um, you know, uh, you know, I know, I know a lot of guys. You know, that they're fans that go to the practice and stuff like that. So far, have you signed anything strange, like an autograph, something that's been, you know, it's like out of the ordinary, or has it been most <laughs> traditional, like footballs and pictures yeah, and stuff it, like that? It's been mostly traditional, okay. uh, traditional things, you know, um, towels, footballs, helmets, uh, posters, stuff like that. I haven't got anything uh, that was out of the ordinary yet. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure it's probably going to come soon one day. No one has asked you to like autograph their like arm or. Oh no, <laughs> nothing like that yet. Okay, I'm sure at some point that'll that'll yeah, probably it might happen. Come. You never know. You, you never know. You never know. Um, and and so uh, just to kind of get a, an idea, who was your uh, who was your favorite player growing up? Uh, growing up, I have to say uh, Patrick Peterson. Okay. Uh, okay. Around the time I was in high school, uh, I watched a lot of SEC football, so. Patrick Peterson was uh was always on my TV um, come Saturdays and then watching him in the NFL just how he kept progressing and and just kept getting better and just maximizing all his talents. I mean, the guy is, is a very versatile player and uh, I feel like I'm a very versatile player as well. So, I mean, you can line him up anywhere on the field and, and he's going to dominate. So, I definitely respect his game. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, what are some of the things you you hope to accomplish this season with the Niners? Uh. Just to go out there and uh, put on my best efforts. I mean, of course, our, our goal as a team is, is, is to make it to the playoffs, win that divisional championship, and on to a Super Bowl, hopefully. 
Uh, but just as players go, just to contribute to the team as much as possible, wherever they need me, let that be special teams or, or, or starting, you know, or backup. Wherever they need me to be, um, whatever they need from me, I'm just going to give them 110%. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I think, it'll, you know, uh, with the type of defense the 49ers play, I'm, I'm sure there will be opportunities for you to get on the field and either play cornerback or, you know, po possibly safety if right. need be. Um, you know, especially with your versatility, playing, being able to play both positions. Right. Um, and so uh, one of the strange things we haven't done yet, though, is uh, we haven't actually um, – got a name for your podcast yet <laughs> so it, it, putting you on the spot a little bit here what would be if you had to to, to give us an idea what you'd want your podcast to be called what, what would you go with uh that's a hard one yeah um i, I think fred fred went with uh striving for greatness something like oh, that oh man something like that you know but uh we haven't come up with it yet, so we're trying right. to we're trying to figure it out. We're but we're gonna have to think on that one. Okay, okay, no problem. One. I need nope. something to talk for it, so okay. <laughs> I don't want to rush it. Okay, no, no, no. It totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Um, you know, and uh, uh, you know, we definitely uh, enjoy having you and here as a guest. And you know, like we said, we'll we'll be we'll be able to do more uh, podcasts throughout the season and talk a little bit more about the games and things like that. Yes. What happened, and you know. Who did what, and you know that sort of thing, um, and you know also if there's any any other things that um, you know uh, we'll be able to talk about other other things you have going on outside of football as well. I'm sure as season progresses, you'll have more uh, more stories and adventures as to oh yeah <laughs> as to what's been going on um, and things like that. Uh, but uh, you know we definitely want to uh, to thank you for coming on coming on the podcast, um, and uh, you know. Uh, like we said, you know, we'll uh, we'll definitely be able to talk to Tarverius a little bit more throughout the season, and um, we'll also create a way for fans to be able to um, send in questions, so you know that they can ask a question on our, on the next show or something like that. Um, this should be pretty fun. So we will see everyone on the next. Uh, I, I always say that we will talk to everyone on the next podcast. <laughs>